Hey everybody, welcome back to another episode of King Tech. I'm your host, Corey, of course. In today's episode, I'm going to give you my top five things that Apple just announced at their keynote today, okay? We got a lot to go through. I mean, a lot. So stick with me. Make sure you hit that like button. Make sure you subscribe to the channel so you do not miss future episodes like these. And let's get through this, all right? Let's go. All right, number five. Number five for me has to be the new Apple services that were just announced. Um, well, really, they were announced at WWC, but we got a lot more information on them this time around. Um, first being Apple Arcade. Apple Arcade is going to be a game changer, literally. Apple Arcade is going to be Apple's take on mobile gaming, and I think that what they're doing is the right way to do it. Mobile games typically cost anywhere from $0.99 cent to up to $7. Um, a lot of mobile games are free, but then you have to pay to, you know, advance in a game or buy more, you know, loot and things like that to make yourself better at the game. Apple service is going to be $5 a month for up to six people, and every game is going to be an exclusive game to Apple, and they're going to be free. No pain to upgrade, no pain to get more characters. Everything is going to be free from the jump. Um, and I think this is really good for mobile gaming because it's going to give it a leg up um, when it comes to all these new streaming services that are coming out for you know your main games like PlayStation stuff like that. Um, there's going to be over a hundred exclusive games to the Apple ecosystem that are coming to the service. And I think these games are coming from some of the biggest players in the world, like Capcom, Sega, Square Enix. You're getting some really good quality games. Like I said, these are totally free with this subscription. And you better play them on anything from your iPhone to your Mac to your TV with the Apple TV, even on the newest uh, iPad touches and stuff like that. So a lot of different ways to play. You can play with your favorite joystick too with some games. So I think Apple is doing this right. And I'm really excited to see what they do in the future with this. Next up, we're gonna have Apple TV Plus. Now, this one's going to be a little bit shaky for Apple, competing with some of the brands like Netflix and Hulu and uh, Disney Plus. But I think they're off to a great start. Um, they announced a few new uh, trailers today. Um, one that was featuring Jason Samoa, you know, who's uh, Aquaman. Um, so they're getting some pretty big talent for this streaming service. They have Steve Carell, Jennifer Anderson in a new show coming up. Um, they have a lot of heavy hitters coming up through this service, including Oprah. Um, it's just going to be it's going to be a lot of competition coming up pretty soon. Um, it's also only going to be five dollars a month for this, and that's up to six people as well. And on top of that, if you buy any Apple device in the near future, they're going to give you Apple TV Plus a whole year for free. That's that's pretty good. They're just trying to get you locked into that ecosystem, you know. Um, so I'm really excited to see what they do with that. Like I said, this one may be a little bit more tough for them dealing with, you know, the likes of Netflix and dealing with Hulu and dealing with Disney Plus. But I'm excited to see what they do with this one. Number three. Number three for me has to be the Apple Watch Series 5. Now, this one's a little bit of a minor upgrade, but there's one big feature that I want to touch on real quick. And that is the always on display that's going to be featured with this new watch. Um, this one be coming to this one will not be coming to the later watches. I don't know why. It seems like it could just be a you know update, but um, this one's gonna have it always on display, so you're just able to quickly glance down and check the time without having to wake up the entire screen and potentially saving battery life. Um, they did claim that this will have the same battery life as previous watches, which we'll you know have to wait and see. But um, Apple usually you know does a good pretty good job with battery life we're also going to be getting a compass and we're also going to be getting a new international sos feature and i think this one's probably going to be a big feature as well this will allow you to call emergency services from wherever you are from wherever you are in the world no matter whether you're in spain and you're living in the u.s no matter where you are you're going to be able to call international services to come help or you know just emergency services anytime you need and i think this is really groundbreaking the, the apple watch has a lot of features built in that are potentially life-saving features from the ekg that can detect your heart rate detect if you have a heart arrhythmia it can also detect if you fall it's just a lot of things built into the apple watch that can potentially save your life and i think apple's done a very good job with this number three number three is going to be the iphone 11. The iPhone 11 is a successor to the iPhone 10R, which Apple claims is one of the best selling phones of last year. And I don't doubt the iPhone 11 will not be the same. Um, the iPhone 11's biggest features has to be the cameras. The iPhone 11's cameras are going to be game changing for those who have not upgraded in a while. Not only are you getting better optics on the main camera, but you're also getting a new wide angle camera that's going to allow you to take 
better photos and better situations. So say that you're in a tight spot and you can't get entire, you can't get everybody into the frame. You probably know why that open camera and you can get everything you need into the frame at one time. And I think that's going to be amazing for iPhone users moving forward. Not only to mention, not also to mention that there's also going to be a new night mode built into these cameras. And that night mode is going to allow you to take some pretty good photos at nighttime. Um, it's going to use a, a combination of long exposure as well as some computer software to get pretty bright photos in dark environments. And I think these are going to be great for those, you know, bar crawlers who always have their flash on and inside the bar. So uh, I think these are going to be some pretty good features. And I'm pretty excited to see what the iPhone 11 cameras can do. Next up, number two, we have the iPhone 11 Pro. Now, the pro naming, eh, you know, whatever. But the iPhone 11 Pro has the potential to be one of the best phones of the year um, from a performance and from a software standpoint. Apple's done a lot with the performance. This new 13 Bionic chip is just blowing every chip out of the water from the Snapdragon 855 to whatever other chip set you can name, the Exynos, the Curran. This one is amazing. And I'm pretty excited. I'm pretty excited to see what Apple can do with the performance on these phones. Um, they have people on, on stage showing the new software features with some of the cameras. There's a new app that's going to allow you to court, record from both cameras at the same time, the wide angle and the standard and the telephoto. So it's going to be a lot of power this phone is going to have. And if you're looking for a phone that has the most power, the iPhone 11 Pro is going to be that phone. There's no doubt that Apple has done something good when it comes to the performance of that phone. Now, number one up on the list has to be the new iPad. This is probably the best deal that Apple has announced in a really long time. This new iPad combines performance with price, and there's nothing in the tablet world that can compete with this new iPad. If you're an artist and you need to draw or create things, the Apple Pencil is available to you. Um, the processing power, like I said, is, is on par with most chipsets that were even released this year. And starting at a price of just $329, I said, I don't think there's anything in the world that can compete with this iPad, with this amount of processing power and the features that iPads have. The iPad app ecosystem is massive. There's anything you want or need is probably in there. Um, whether you want to edit videos, record videos, there's so much you can do with an iPad. And I think for anybody that's looking to get into the Apple ecosystem, this is the way to do it, especially this price point for $329. It just can't be beat. Uh, and there's so many other things to go into about the new iPad. They upgraded the screen, the 10.2 inch screen. Um, there's th over 3 million pixels. They improved the screen. Like it's just an amazing value for the money. And if you're looking to get, like I said, into the Apple ecosystem, I don't think you should start anywhere else. I think you should start with the new iPad. And I think that's the best place to get into it. All right. So with all that being said, thanks for listening. Um, this has been another episode of King Tech. Don't forget to subscribe. Don't forget to like this video. If you have any questions, hit me up in the comments. Hit me up on Instagram at Mr. King Corey. Hit me up on Twitter also at Mr. King Corey. Um, and just let me know what you think about the video, guys. If you have any questions, like I said, just let me know. All right. Thanks for watching. This is another episode of King Tech.